What's up everybody, episode 22 here, and we're going to talk about how I know what to do for my four link, uh, where to locate the four link plates, where to locate the number one bar, um, where to locate the chassis side four link plate, how long the four link bars need to be, uh, the rough angles that they need to be positioned, and so on and so forth. So, um, so I'm, I got some CAD files open on my computer. Uh, these CAD files are ones that I draw myself. And I use uh, a 2D version of AutoCAD called QCAD. Uh, unfortunately, I can't afford any Autodesk or SolidWorks stuff, which I like. Uh, Fusion 360 would work, but I got beef with Fusion 360, so no. Uh, I like QCAD. QCAD's super simple for just doing 2D DXF, DXF files and stuff like that. And it's uh, it's an older style Autodesk setup, which is something I'm super familiar with. Um, I've been doing RCAD since uh, R10 on MS-DOS. So like literally 24 years ago, I was like 11 years old doing AutoCAD. Uh, <laughs> so I'm used to some old stuff. So uh, if you guys notice here, we got the Ford 88. The last video, we got these plates welded up. We got our spacer uh, support bushings in. So those are welded up permanently in. Okay. Now, some people don't put anything in these, you know, just so you guys know, this is something that I like to do. And again, it just helps keep this structure as solid as possible through here. And it kind of keeps it nice and sturdy for when I'm welding this together. I had someone mention on my Instagram that I won't be able to weld this all the way around and I'll be able to weld about 75%. Um, I do have some bendable tungsten, which we talked about in the last video. So you'd be surprised how good I can get down in here with the cups that I have and the TIG rot, the uh, tungsten that I have. So I will be able to weld the majority of this all the way around on the inside as well. Obviously the outside will be fully welded. Um, and then the inside will be, you know, probably about three quarters. So I'll probably get, um, most of it right here, go to the other side and get most of it. And then like on the top and the bottom, there may be some spots I can't reach. Not a big deal. That'd be plenty of structure, especially when I have this chromoly inch and a half bar here. Um, these are long, so these will get cut. So this will get cut to, um, let's see, it'd be 21 and a quarter inches, uh, which will be the outside to outside dimension here. These are 20 inches center on center. So from the center of this plate to the center of that plate, it's 20 inches, okay? So uh, the width of this overall is inch and a quarter. So you just add 20 inches plus one inch and a quarter, and that gives you your total length. Um, so that will go end to end. Those will be welded together. They'll be welded here and here. And then there'll be a, a plate setup that comes this way and comes out this way. So I'll go as close as I can to this edge. And then there's a little edge back here that I'll weld to as well. So it'll be both of these coming down to the bar. And then back here, I'd mentioned this too, that I'll have a bar that comes out like this, kind of like a tow hook, but it will be as low as I can to this bar. And then it'd also be a good spot for the uh, jack to go. If I ever need to jack up on the rear end for any reason, it'd be a good spot to put the jack. These upper support bars will be cut off right here and then just go into the housing. Obviously, I'll have to cope them um, and taper them and everything so that they sit nice and flush in this housing. I'll grind the housing real good, weld it to the housing. This will get welded on both sides as well. Same thing over here. So then basically we tie this thing into a big square and then we'll do those front bars we talked about coming off of like the tube out here over to the pinion somehow, okay? So... I still have yet to decide how exactly I'm going to do those front bars, but those front bars are crucial. So I definitely have to do them and I have to do them right. We have the alignment rod in here, which I believe in one of the other videos we had in. Um, you can see it spins nice and free. And then I have to get these centered up. And basically what I do for that is I kind of hold this thing so that this angle and this angle are the same. So I will end up zeroing I'll zero my angle finder, probably my, my little uh, magnetic one. I'll zero that. Then I'll zero the back of the housing. 
um, to keep that level. And then just double check that that's 90 to the pinion. I'm almost positive that it is, but I'll double check it. So I'll probably put something out here, uh, double check that. And then this will be on the same plane as this. So this should be parallel to this. And then this guy here, say this is uh, eight degrees. As long as it's eight degrees this way and negative eight degrees that way, then I know that this is a uh, level as well. So I'll just rotate that until the angle on both sides is good. And then I'll know that's level, tack it up. Same deal over here, same angle, you know, whether it's six and six or seven and seven, whatever it is, uh, tack that up. I actually have to weld this before I do any of that. I kind of forgot to say that in the video, but all this will actually come back off. I will weld these tubes. Um, so I got to get in here and grind and clean a little bit better. And then I'm going to use some 309 L uh, stainless rod, high nickel content. Um, I may heat up the housing a little bit. What I'll probably do is run a root test pass. So I'm going to do a root weld. Um, and basically I'll just do a, a small weld, uh, as much penetration as I can get uh, in a couple different spots. So like an inch here, inch here, rotate it, inch there, inch there, rotate it. And I'll keep going all the way around. And as long as I don't hear any cracking or anything like that, you'll hear some pings and stuff. If I don't hear any pinging where it's trying to pull the material off the housing, then I won't preheat. But if it pings at all, then I'll grind out the first weld or whenever it pings, I'll grind it out. And then I'll grab my torch and I'll heat this up, grind it clean again and then go back in and weld it again, just so that I have a, a good weld. I also have a heat, a blanket um, that I could toss in the oven too. You get the blanket to like, you know, 400 degrees, 350 degrees for a few minutes. So the blanket's nice and hot. You grab it with some welding gloves, you come over here and then you toss it on, toss it on what you just welded and it will keep it um, a little warm while it cools down or you could use a heat gun you know so like as i finish welding i'll have a heat gun on it or a torch and just try and slowly cool it down but it's super important to get these welded first before anything else then i'll put all this stuff on there like you see and start welding it up um i'll probably i'll probably do the ends and get those done and then once i know that this is good so the ends are welded the tubes are welded and this still rotates. You want this bar nice and loose. That's how you know that nothing bent or nothing's crooked. As long as this still rotates, then I'll start welding the four link bars, okay? So let's talk about how I know where stuff needs to be. Have I worked on a ton of chassis cars? Absolutely, I've worked on a ton of four link cars, two chassis cars, uh, I've been around guys doing this stuff for a long time. Uh, I've done a ton of research. I don't know everything. And one thing I don't know is four link angles, bar lengths, uh, shock settings, stuff like that. That's where my knowledge dips off. You guys will see me build engines and do fabrication. Pretty good, I would imagine. I mean, I, I definitely think, especially engine stuff, I'm super confident in engine stuff. Fabrication is my next you know, top tier, you know, skill or whatever. Uh, and then, you know, you got your basic repair, electrical, uh, tunings, probably just under um, engine building and repair. And then the bottom of the barrel for what I know on a car is suspension tuning. All right. Um, I know, I know about a lot of stuff, but I, I don't know the ins and out of what's the best to do or what to try. So really what I'm doing is relying on somebody that is an industry leader. And I consider Tin Soldiers uh, race cars an industry leader. They have been leading X275 and competing in X275 since basically its inception. They are some of the kings of no prep racing. They are flat out amazing, amazing fabricators, chassis builders, suspension tuners, they're the man in my eyes right now in the industry. There's other people out there that are doing it, but in that specific field of racing, which is where basically this car will compete, you know, drag and drive is basically a low prep situation at every track because you have so many cars. You have possibilities of rain. You have too much sun. You, you name it. You got dew from the morning, okay? I mean, the track prep is only on point for a short window during the day during drag and drive events usually and it's a total 20 coin flip situation 
if you're going to be able to do a hit while the track's set up. So the car needs to be able to hook on badly and poorly prepped surfaces. So therefore, I'm going to Tin Soldier using their uh, information that they provide for their brackets, okay? So they have a system called a low prep four link bracket setup, okay? The brackets that go on the rear end is just their small tire bracket. So basically 28, 29 inch tire uh, and smaller. So that would be like 315 radial, uh, you know, 28105Ws, uh, 2911s or 13s, I think. Um, and then, you know, your 2610s, your 288 or yeah, 268s, uh, your 275s, I mean, you name it. Anything smaller than that, this bracket setup is basically what they recommend. Then on the chassis side, they have two different brackets. They have one traditional style bracket that you would work great in a door car uh, or a uh, big tire car. So any tires bigger than that, you're, you're like almost pro mod style or top sportsman style vehicles, you know, that are running 30 inch, 33, 31 inch tires, stuff like that. 16 inch wheel, you know, width wise 11 and up big, big tire stuff. Those brackets were great. Then they have a low prep bracket. That low prep bracket is where I think the key is. And what that does is that allows for a short upper bar. And when you shorten that upper bar, you allow the instant center of the vehicle to increase further out as you're going down the track. And, and trust me when I say, that's only the tip of the iceberg of why this stuff works. And again, I don't know all the information, but that's part of it. It's gonna react quicker, and then it's going to carry that instant center further out. So as you're, as you're ramping power in on a lower prep surface, it's going to extend that instant center out. So here's your vehicle. Say my instant center is right here. I launch the car. The suspension starts to separate. So it's gonna shove the tire into the ground. The suspension separates. And as it's separating, as the power's coming in, the instant center is increasing. So the instant center is going out further and further, and that's going to give the rear suspension more leverage to hike the car up. So if you've ever seen a radio car uh, pick the tires up 60, 100 feet out, that's probably the reason. That instant center is increasing, and it's giving the rear end more leverage and it's transferring more weight and it's pushing the tires down into the ground harder and harder. So it's transferring weight and pushing the tires down harder and harder. So as you ramp that power in on a low prep situation, it's gonna plant that tire harder and harder as you go down the track. Whereas with a traditional four link, which is equal length bars, that instant center is not gonna change a whole lot. It's gonna go up and down a little bit as the suspension either squats or separates. Um, but it's not going to move a whole lot. And a lot of time those cars too also have wheelie bars too, which is a totally different deal. And I'm not going to have wheelie bars on my car. So 10 soldier low prep setup. These guys supply, oh my gosh, the glare. <laughs> All right, there we go. So they supply the dimensions that you see here. So what you see here, I need to get closer to the computer. So what you see here, this is my ground clearance, okay? So my chassis table is roughly four inches from the bottom of the tire, four and a half inches from the bottom of the tire rack, and five inches from the ground. So the ground's an imaginary line, okay? So the chassis table is five inches uh, below the ground. Now my bottom of my number one bar needs to be four and a half plus or minus one. So it can be as low as three and a half and as high as five and a half. I'm going to favor the three and a half or the, the four inch. So I'm going to go a little lower. And that's mainly because um, I just, one, I want the car lower. All right. And two, I can raise the suspension up I think easier than I can lower the suspension for, for what I'm going to end up having at the end of the day. So Tim, Tin Soldiers calls out this number here. So this number is locked in. 
I have to abide by their four and a half plus or minus one for this number one bar. Then this is the bracket that they supply. This bracket allows for that shorter upper bar, okay? Now keep in mind the front of the vehicle is this way. This is the back of the vehicle. So their, their low prep bar, this one goes on the chassis itself, welds to the number one bar. Then they call out an 18 to 20 inch lower and a 12 to I believe 14 inch upper. I'm going for the shorter side of those bars um, just because I don't think I need longer ones necessarily. And this, this is stuff too that it won't be easy to move, but if for some reason I get myself into a situation where it's not gonna work, I could essentially cut the rear off the part of that car and retube it. God, I would not wanna do that, but it would be possible or it would just be possible to have new four link bar or four link plates cut um, and then redo just the plates. So, but this is based off of what they suggest, okay? And then I also um, had a little Facebook convo back and forth with one of the owners and I showed him this exact picture here and he said it should work. So I haven't talked to him in person and honestly, I probably will talk to him in person by the time I get the rear end sitting in the car and I'm just about ready to put this in. Once I'm just about ready to put this in, I probably will call him up and have a quick convo with him and just make sure I'm not overlooking anything, okay? So from there, because this dimension's locked, this dimension's locked, the tire to the ground is locked, okay? The tire can't be any lower to the ground than the ground height on the number one bar. So I lock that position. I lock this position. I lock these bar positions according to their suggestion. And then that's just going to basically make it so I know where those measurements need to be. I won't be able to change them. It's to their suggestion. And I'm going to weld it in there just like that. I've had a ton of people ask how I know where to put this stuff. How do I know where to put the number one bar? This right here. That number one bar needs to be so far away from the axle. This is why I started with doing the center line of the wheel wells like I was doing, okay? So I'm finding where I like the tire at in the back of the car. I like where it looks. It's center of the wheel well. I'm happy. Now I get the height where it needs to be for these measurements. And then from there, that number one bar position is locked in. I won't be able to change it. It's locked in. It's according to their measurements and dimensions. I found where my tire's happy. I'm building my rear end to what they suggest uh, with their plates and stuff. And then from there, that number one bar is locked in. So now I know where that number one bar has to go. It's probably going to end up somewhere in this area here. Obviously in the back of the car. Okay. Now that number one bar may not be the actual number one bar. In the SFI book, the number one bar is the bar behind the driver's seat that the main hoop goes to and the funny car cage uh, intersects with, I believe is how they word it, because you don't actually go all the way down to the number one bar with the funny car cage, I believe. I'd have to double check. It's been a long day. But what I can do is say my number one bar for my four link is here, but I'm going to mount the seat up here, okay? So this will be another number one bar and then it will just tie together, tie together to where the four link needs to be, okay? So essentially there'll be like a sub cage behind the 25-2 chassis, okay? It gets a little complicated. As this story progresses, it will make sense. And I will continue to explain it like this and break it down as much as I can. And then obviously we're almost 20 minutes in, but I do wanna show you some other stuff. This is the rear end. Okay, um, ignore these. These are temporary like four link things I put in there. But this is the wheel hub where your studs and wheel bolt to. This is the axle itself. This is the Mosier uh, rear end end, the uh, ones that I bought. This is the axle tube. And then this is the housing area and the pinion center, okay? So these dimensions here are how I got, you know, I needed 40 inches from hub to hub. So where the tires bolt on, I need a 40 inches. And then I know from here to the front of that Mosier end, bearing end, has to be two and a half. And then obviously I measure the end. I know how wide the end is. And then from there, I know how I can measure the housing width, okay? 
I can find the pinion center, which we all had, we had a video on already. And then I can just build out my tube lengths. So now I know exactly, all right, this tube needs to be this length. This tube needs to be this length. So that's how I know to cut that. And, and obviously you don't need AutoCAD for this. Literally a pencil and a ruler will get you the same result. So now we got the actual four link bars, okay? Or four link plates, I should say. The actual four link plates. I know that they need to be 20 inches on center to center. How do I know they need to be 20 inches center on center? Because I know how big my axle is. I know how big my wheels and tires are. I went on to Strange's website. I pulled up like the common hypercoil that most drag race shocks use. I know the outer dimensions of that shock coil and i and i said that i want at least an inch and a half of clearance from the tire to where that shock coil needs to be the shock coil is in line with the plates so if my shock coil is four and a half inches i know that from this center to out here needs to be two and a quarter inches i know how big my tire is so there i move these plates in until i give myself an inch and a half from the tire to the shock coil and that came up with that 20 inches so this is really just all back math okay and I, and I hope this is helping people figure out oh how to visualize this stuff and oh that's how you get that dimension i'm not just pulling it out of thin air no you have to do stack ups essentially okay and stack ups are um when you have all of your components added together what's the clearance between these components all right, so, and you have to start with the known entities, okay? So my 15 by 14 inch wheel, my tire's a 28, 10 and a half. It's only so wide on that wheel. So you pull those dimensions. You know that your brake hub offset is two and a half inches. You know that that Mosier end you have in your hand that you're welding on is this dimension. You can measure it. You know the axle tube from here to here is a cast it's a cast piece. I'm not going to change that cast piece. So it's that particular dimension. The four link plates, they have to be three quarter inches apart for the four link heim joints to fit in. So they're a quarter inch each thick. So you're just adding all these components together and drawing them out until you get them where you need them. So 20 inches center on center. That's how I break that down. And then I believe that's it. Yeah, so that's it for that. So that means 20 inches center on center. So that means the rear chassis that comes down here into the trunk behind the tires or above the tires is gonna be the two bars will be 20 inches apart, center on center. Thus making these 20 inches apart, center on center. So again, with that stack up, this dimension, we know it, right? We know this dimension. From here to here, we know that dimension. Same with this and this. You know how big your tire is. You know how far from here to that outer brake uh, hub or the uh, axle hub is. You just do your math and you add all that stuff up. The biggest thing that I needed to do this was what Tin Soldier supplies on their website. You literally can go to Tin Soldier Race Cars, go to their website, click for a link, look at the plates that I bought and the I still have to purchase the low prep ones. Um, which I'll, hopefully I'll be doing in a week or so. Um, so purchase the low prep ones. You look on their website and they literally have a CAD drawing that's similar to that, but it just gives you the ranges, okay? This is a long-winded video, but I hope it has the explaining that I've had people comment on, I've had people message me about. I hope it's a detailed enough explaining. If you guys have any more questions, please leave a comment below like the video, make sure you subscribe if you're watching for the first time. Um, I really appreciate everybody watching these videos. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're loving the content. The next video, we'll be welding this rear end up and hopefully calling it a completed housing. You know, hopefully it'll be a completed housing that I can finally stick down, you know, figure out a mount system for this guy and get it on there. Get it sitting there, get the tires sitting there, get everything nice and happy. And then uh, maybe we'll get a number one bar in soon. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good night.